Hello again. Welcome to another episode of the Iranian Market Minute. Today is Tuesday, April 19th, and this is episode number 108. My name is Justin Hewn. I am your host. I'm the founder and publisher of the Uranium Insider Pro newsletter, the only investing newsletter that focuses solely on uranium and publishes on a regular monthly basis. As always, nothing in this video is intended to be investing advice. I'm not your financial advisor. This is not financial advice. Please always do your own due diligence when it comes to investing and always take responsibility for your own choices. All right, this is going to be a pretty quick update today. Probably will be closer to the Uranium Market Minute rather than the Uranium Market 20 Minutes. Um, want to highlight something I think is important to, uh, to understand in the mailbag section that um, was prompted by a question that came in to me from YouTube. And um, I also wanted to just quickly run through the daily scoreboard, the spot price of Uranium, spot flows, ETF flows. And we will look at the charts where I will reassure you that the sky is not falling. All right. Uh, the spot price is sticking uh, 64.50 a pound. It's down only about 25 cents since yesterday. And the spot is again out of the market. They did not raise any new capital, did not buy any pounds. This is six days in a row. They have not issued any new shares in the market as they continue to trade at a discount to their net asset value. However, they have purchased 250,000 pounds over that time period, still sitting on 59 million in cash in the treasury. Yesterday, they closed at an even wider discount to NAV of 6.39%. Uh, negative to uh, their net asset value. Of course, we know that they need to be at a greater than 1% premium to NAV in order to issue shares into the market as they take a 1% management fee when they purchase uranium from the spot market. So we're going to have to see the sector rally a bit here, money come back into spot and or the spot price lower before we get back to that kind of premium to NAV. For in the meantime, it gives the sector a chance to breathe. Um, slight correction here. Most of these stocks are down to their, you know, pushing their 20-day moving average or something like that. Really not that big of a deal. Sector equity ETFs, URA actually reported more inflows again yesterday. 130,000 shares issued, uh, led to 2.5 million in new mandated buying. Not a whole lot, but really interesting to see on days when the sector is actually selling off their flows coming into the ETFs. Hmm. Sounds familiar. Um, let's look at the charts. URA down a little bit more than 1% on the day, down 1.36%. Um, not a whole lot of dip buying, but a little bit coming in. Volume, nothing really to write home about. We see and a couple of levels of support here. This area I highlighted here was previous resistance on three different occasions. That's where we're sitting right now, right where the 20-day moving average is pulling up. That's been somewhat of support, although we've had some, uh, some undercut lows below that 20-day since this rally uh, back in February. And of course, um, you know, I would expect if we lose this, we've got a decent support level here down at about 25.25. And then a pullback to the 50-day is expected during uptrends. Um, nothing really too concerning here. Spot Physical Uranium Trust trading down substantially, minus 1.8% on the day. The spot price is down slightly. So we are probably at around a 7% discount to NAV. We haven't seen that type of discount since last month. We saw a 10% discount to NAV on a single day. That uh, extreme discount to their net asset value did bring some money in, but the chart is clearly rolling over here. Um, we've got five days in a row trading down. The MACD is turning down, RSI turning down. So this chart is turning short-term bearish. However, you can see the moving averages are all still screaming towards the sky. 20 days starting to roll over, but that's such a short-term moving average. I don't really rely on that too much other than to, dip, to, uh, to show the short-term trends. Either way, overall bullish chart, especially if you zoom out to the long term. I also like to watch Cameco as it has been leading the sector. Um, has rolled over a few days in a row. MACD is also turning down, RSI turning down slightly. I would actually expect this to pull back a bit more here, at least to that 20-day, which has been support throughout this rally over the past almost two months. So if we lose that 20-day, in my opinion, that would mean a slightly larger correction. Perhaps we go all the way back down to the 50-day, or perhaps we go back at least to um, this strong previous resistance here. We get back down to this $28 range. I would not be surprised to see that, and it would still be a very, very healthy uptrend for the sector with a bit of a pullback. Nothing goes up in a straight line, right? All right, so somebody asked me a question yesterday. Um, uh, having to do with the spot price of uranium holding with spot not buying that much. Okay, so yes, that's very, very important to highlight. And what, what are the reasons here? The reasoning is spot is still sitting on some cash and we're not seeing offers come into them even at lower prices. Uh, that is very interesting to highlight. Now they're not sitting on a ton of cash. We know that they do want to have some cash on their balance sheet 
Previously, they drove it down to maybe 30, 35 million. As their nav grows, that cash balance they want to keep in there might grow. So they might not actually buy any uranium with that 59 million in cash at this point. That is a possibility. Um, but what we've typically seen in the past is when uh, SPUD has traded at a discount to NAV for a period longer than a day or two, we've seen the market react to that. We've seen traders take advantage of that and the spot price lower. What is the reasoning for this? Well, one reason is that utilities uh, that have term contracts that they've signed in the past and they're receiving deliveries of those term contracts, many of those contracts are partially spot referenced. So that means that they pay a fixed price, um, a fixed term price for that contract. And then partially, uh, that, that contract is partially referenced to the spot price at the time of delivery. The higher the spot price goes, the more they pay. Even though this is a term contract, they're not buying on the spot market. If the contract is at least partially referenced to the market, then they're going to end up paying, uh, paying up for that uh, as the spot price continues to rise. So in the past, we've seen some uh, um, you know, I, I, and I say manipulation, I don't mean that in a negative way, but some influence on the spot market coming from utilities, coming from traders to push that price down a bit when Sprott is not active in the spot market, which is right now, they're not very active. They have purchased a quarter million pounds in the past six trading days, which is historically significant, but uh, relative to how Sprott's been operating, not all that significant. So to see the spot market stay here is a really good sign. Um, Sprott is, is half of the trading volume in the spot market this year. And that's a huge change, okay? Typically in an average year, you'll see the spot market volume will be 80, 75, 80% traders. Traders churning pounds, being sold back and forth to each other, not end user demand such as Sprott. So this is a really, really big change in the market. And we have to recognize how big of a change this is and how many other huge changes there are. It is taking some time for the market and the utilities to figure out exactly how to react and move forward from this. Obviously, the big, um, the you know, 800-pound gorilla in the room is Russia. Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Russia supposedly uh, officially declaring war on Ukraine after Ukraine had sunk one of their naval ships. Um, the conditions there are terrible, and the conflict um, appears to be escalating. I also want to mention that you know what we're seeing right now is not necessarily only. Uh, in reaction to the present kinetic conflict that's going on, we expect that the, um, the, the realignment geopolitically that it's happening currently is likely to hold, even if they declared a peace resolution tomorrow, which, you know, knock on wood, would be wonderful. Um, so there, there are big shifts uh, happening beneath our feet. And one of those is Russia. Another one is the financialization of the spot market. So these two things have the utilities sort of in an interesting, uh, you know, precarious position here. Uh, the third, obviously, would be the biggest supplier of U308, which is Kazatomprom and Kazakhstan JVs. So production out of Kazakhstan is uh, more than 40% of the world's production of U308. Okay, we get uh, almost 60 million pounds a year coming out of Kazakhstan, uh, where we have, you know, production of 135 million pounds a year. So, uh, and Kazakhstan obviously is. Um, you know, partially potentially influenced by this. They've got JVs with the Russians. They have shipping routes that go through Russia. Um, you know, it's it's complicated, basically, is, is what I'm saying. And it's a complicated situation for the utilities. So um, I would suggest to investors to have a bit of patience with this present situation, to focus on the fundamentals, to focus on supply and demand, to focus on the original reasons why you might have become interested in this sector interested in this investment that has to do with the sector growing year over year, the increased embracing of nuclear by multiple countries around the world, um, the climate concerns by multiple countries around the world in terms of carbon emissions of their energy production, and of course, the fact that it's very, very slow for the uranium sector to respond to a price increase, and the fact that the price needs to go higher. When you add to that disruptions such as we're seeing from Russia, and this current conflict, when you add to that the financialization aspect, when you add to that uh, Mr. Chimpaglia, the CEO of Sprott, talking about multi-hundred billion, if not trillion dollar AUM funds, uh, speaking with him, wanting to position uranium, but they can't touch it until the liquidity improves. There's money on the sidelines here. Um, this, this is going a lot, a, lot, a lot higher. It doesn't necessarily happen to happen right now or tomorrow or this week or even this month. So keep your eye on the long-term position for the long-term, cut out the daily noise. And if you're still positioning, days and weeks like this might be giving you opportunities. 
all right, I'm going to leave it there. Um, I'm like I mentioned, I'm going uh, on a boots on the ground uh, due diligence trip for the remainder of the week. So I will not be back for the next Uranium Market Minute, which will be on Monday, um, April 25th. So until then, please be well, take care, and I will see you next week. Thank you so much. Cheers.